discuss in this uh, short video is the DMSDTS. Now this will be the demo version, but remember the demo versions of any of these along with the dashboard all they all are uh, have everything available in them. The only thing is they will only work on a demo account and they do have a time limit of 30 days. Otherwise they are fully functional. We don't limit any of the functions on them. So it gives you a good idea of just what they can do for you if they work for you in your training style or not. So in this case we're going to look at the uh, DMSD which stands for DMARC trend lines. The SD just stands for supply and demand zones. In this case we do not use the supply and demand zone. They are just there for you to look at if you are familiar with them to give you an idea just where we're getting the break of the trend line. And if you aren't familiar with them go over to the uh, web page and uh, there are under the uh, one of the buttons there you will find some information on supply and demand zones so anyway let's just open a chart we can pick the dollar yen here here's just a blank one hour chart and we'll dump this on there and these are the basic settings for now. We just click OK so we can see what it looks like. Okay, now I'll open up the settings again so we can talk a little about them. We have a fixed take profit. In this case, the default is false. So if you want to set a fixed take profit of a certain number of pips, you just set it here. Set this to true and put 10, 20, 30 pips, whatever you want in here. And when the trade opens, it will put a take profit line on the chart that many pips away from your entry. Same way with the stop losses. Normally set it false, default. If you want to set a automatic stop loss when the trade opens, you can set that here. And then when the trade opens, it will put a stop loss line on the chart. Now remember these take profit and stop loss lines that are placed on the chart are fixed. But you can double click them and move them around to wherever you want to put them. So if you put a take profit line on here, say at 10 pips, and it starts to go up and gets real close and you think it's going to really move, just double click the take profit line and move it up farther. And we also have a trailing stop loss pip lock setting, which is default at false. Now if you set this to true, what it does, in this case the default setting is 20 pip target when trade opens and it goes into profit by 20 pips, it will start trailing by 18. Then once it hits 25 pips of profit, it will trail by 15. And when it hits 30 pips of profit, it will trail by 5. So you notice it keeps tightening up the stop loss. Now you don't have to use these if you don't want to just leave it at false. Or if you don't want to use all of these, just set them as 0. Just remember you got to have at least two settings in here. you got to have a target and you got to have a trail by. So if I don't want to use any of these other ones, just set them all to 0 and set these at whatever you want and then set this to true. Now we also have a draw take profit, draw stop loss line over here. Once the trade is opened, you can use these to just click it and it will randomly put a take profit line on there or click the stop loss. It'll randomly put a stop loss line on there. Then you can grab those and put them wherever you want. But for these to work, the trade has to be open it has to be a live trade and all of these have to be set to false so if you want to use this button for take profit this button must be set to false if you want to use the stop loss button line after the trade is open this one has to be set to false 
and this one has to be set to false, both of those, then these will work once the trade is open. They do not work until the trade opens up, so you can't put them on there ahead of time. Okay, the buy or sell only work when there is no trade present. So if you're looking at something, you say you want to get into it, you got there a little late, just hit the buy or sell and it should open the trade at that time. Now these will not add to a trade. So once you have a trade open live, they do not work. Then you got the close trade. If you look at it, you say it looks like it's starting to go into a ranging mode or hit support or resistance. You can hit the close trade and just shut it down. And then of course you got the show trade button like we got on our other ones. That will show you past trades, red lines, are losers, green lines are winners. And in this particular case right now, the default, it comes up in the alert mode. What that does, it puts a yellow up or down arrow back on the dashboard. And if you have any of these selected or set up in the MT4 platform, it can send you one of these alerts telling you you have a possible trade. It's just an alert. Then what you can do is you can come over and look at it, and if it looks like it's a good trade, you want to take it, just click the alert button, it'll turn this off, it'll go into a trade mode, and it will take the trade, as long as you have everything set up back in the dashboard. Have your TS turned on, you have the buttons turned on, and you're in a time trade period on the dashboard, and your spread is not red, it will take the trade. And of course you get the on dock, which probably a lot of you won't be using, but if you have multiple monitors, you get the on dock, it will take this chart, put it over, you can drag it to another monitor if you want to. That way sometimes you get a you may have a couple trades that you want to watch and rather than using the uh, Windows thing where you can cascade them or do whatever you want. You can undock them and drag them over to another monitor. Okay, breakout line. The default setting is whenever it breaks above or below the line by two pips, it will take the trade. And if you want to use Candle close, set that to true. What that does, the candle has to close above the line or close below the line for it to take the trade. Then it will open on the next candle. So the previous candle has to be closed above or below one of the breakout lines. You set that to true. Otherwise, with that, it's false. It only has to go through the line by two pips in this case. You can change this if you want to. In this case, if it goes through by two pips, it will take the trade. Auto draw trend lines. What that does, these will keep updating. So we probably want that set at true most of the time, unless you don't want them to move. But normally you want to set to true. That way, these will refresh when you get new fractals, because these are fractals. So if we get a new fractal over here someplace, say we got a new fractal down here or something, then it will redraw. Just remember the uh, green line always slopes down and the red line always slopes up. That's the way these demark trend lines are drawn. If you look over in our web page, you will find information on how DeMarc draws his lines. There is a video over there, I believe, on it. Draw horizontal lines. Now, these lines, you can grab these and put them wherever you want. Here, I'll show you how to turn this off. And we'll expand this out just a little bit. But you can double click these and you can put them wherever you want. Say you 
want to put it like that. Now, a lot of times you want to do a horizontal line. Sometimes they're kind of hard to do perfectly horizontal. Now, notice that it stays there because we got the auto redraw turned off. If you had the auto redraw turned on, it would automatically come back down here if there was a tick coming in. But right now it's on the weekend, there's no ticks. Now, if we want to, we can draw horizontal lines. So say if you're just going to be doing horizontal stuff, you don't want trend lines going up or down, whatever, moving around like that, you can do horizontal lines. And you notice it puts two horizontal lines on there. Now when you double click these, you move them around. You don't have to worry about trying to make them level. So now you got to break out. Say you wanted to, if it breaks above that line by two pips, you're going to take the trade. Or if it breaks below this line by two pips, it'll go short. So that's basically what that does. So for now, we're just going to go back. This is to reset to reset. Remember, turn your, probably want your auto draw on that way these will keep refreshing as the pips as the uh, price action continues on over here and you get new fractals they would redraw automatically and that's what you want to do so best thing to do is have that set to true now these are the uh, Supply zones, the red ones, the green ones are the demand zones. They are not used for anything by the TS itself. These are here just for you to look at. So if you get a breakout real close up here long, you may say, well, geez, I don't want it to go long because I'm hitting up against a supply zone. So you may want to wait until you get break through the supply zone. But now down here in this case, this one would have been that one would have been down there previously. And it was our two pip Breakout. Yep, we got plenty of plenty there. We're going all the way up to eight or so. So when we hit two pips of breakout, we would have got in the trade, approximately right in there someplace. And this one would have been up at the present time, 28 pips. That was before this fractal form because we were down here breaking out here. But once this fractal form which, of course, it usually takes five bars. With the auto turned on, then this automatically goes up to there once this fractal shows up. But that fractal will not show up until we're down either on this bar or over here. Entry here, usually they take uh, five closed bars. So then this line will jump up here and we're ready for the next one. But now when it breaks out, you can see it broke out by two pips. But you may not want to take the trade because you say, well, we're already well past our demand zone, you know, well on our way. Do we want to take it or not? It's kind of up to you. Now, once you get this set up, The way you want the indicator set up the way you want it. And you can see I turned this to true. We'll just leave everything the way it is for now. We can turn this OK. And what we can do is we can save this 
as our default template. As our default. And then what I do is go back to my dashboard and what I do is close that chart just to get, so I don't want to get a double of the same chart, just close out the charts. Then what I do is highlight all 28 buttons, hit open charts, and we should open up 28 charts. There's number 28. And now I go back and look in here, we do have a signal. Now remember we're in alert mode, see? So we got an alert telling us we got a up possible buy. Tells us go look at it. So let's go look at it, see what it looks like. And as you can see, there it is. We are well past the two pips because we just started right now. So actually, we are up 17 pips already. So now you look at it, you say, do I want to take this trade? Because we're in the alert mode, so it did not take the trade. Do I still want to enter this trade and take a chance? That's up to you. If you decide yes, all you got to do is click the alerts. Once you click the alerts, now you're no longer in alert mode. The alert mode is off. If we go back and look at the dashboard, you'll notice now we have a green arrow. Of course, right now I'm on a weekend, so I can't take any trades. But if I had the TS turned on and I had a trading time selected, Either that or turn this on for 24 hours trading. And my spread was okay, which is good. We're at 0.7. I got my spread set at a maximum 2. Everything meets my criteria. This would now take a long trade. Okay, so I think and, uh, it's entirely up to you if you use the alert mode or not. Okay, so that about wraps it up for this one.